Hi everyone, welcome back to Lifting the Lamp. I'm continuing my video series on the basics of magic. Tonight I'm going to be talking about the four main magical tools, what they represent, whether there's any need to use them. I'm also going to be talking about invocation and evocation, and I'm going to talk about how to use the tables of correspondence to pick different elements of the working that will work together uh, in a way that matches with the overall spirit or purpose of the working. So if you watch this video together with my previous video on how to construct a basic magic ritual and my video on how to cast a circle and do banishings, you'll have everything you need to conduct a basic magical ritual and adapt that formula in as many ways as you want. And you can find links to those other two videos in the description below. Uh, but now here's the last of the essentials you need to know about to construct a basic magic ritual. So first of all, let me talk about the four main magical tools. Uh, there's a few different types of tools uh, that can be touted as important magical tools in a ritual, but there's really in the Western esoteric tradition, in Western ceremonial magic, four main tools, which are the archetypal magical tools for theoretically any magical working. Uh, they are the wand, the cup, the sword or dagger, and the pentacle or disc, sometimes referred to as a pentacle if you're using older kind of language. And each of these four main magical tools represents one of the four elements. And as one of the four elements represents a certain type of archetypal force in the human psyche. So you've got wands for fire. Uh, this represents the firm, straight, single-pointed will of the magician, uh, their ability to project their intent forcefully and with great focus. Uh, you've got the cup. This is, of course, the tool of water, uh, and it re represents the ability of the magician to become like a, a vessel in order to receive knowledge, receive wisdom, receive impressions from whatever energy they're trying to work with. Now, it represents intuition. It represents being uh, open to, to allowing the forces that you're invoking or evoking to work with you, work through you to achieve the result that you want. You've got the swords or the daggers, which represent air and also represent the intellect of the magician in the same way that the uh, sword cuts through things, our intellect can cut and slice through ideas. Uh, and we need to have a ruthlessly discerning mind when we're engaged in a magical working because we need to know what is true and what is fantasy. And we always need to be testing the spirits. We always need to be thinking about whether we are conducting every aspect of the working with precision. And then there is the discs, or pentacles or panticles. This represents the material basis of the working. Uh, usually this is like a talisman, a disc-shaped talisman with some sort of symbol on it to represent the working or whatever entity is being contacted. And what you have with this disc is really a physical representation of something spiritual, which is the presence that you're trying to contact or the, the working you're trying to engage in. So it's about taking something that is uh, ethereal, spiritual, and making it real. It's about taking the intent and the spirit of the working and making it into something that is manifest in the world. That is what the pentacle symbolizes. Uh, in terms of the use of these four tools, uh, in an ideal scenario, the magician is always portrayed as having all four of these elemental tools on their altar. Think about the magician trump of the tarot. You can see all four of those magical tools on the magician's altar. In practice, however, it's not necessary to have all of these tools. In fact, it's not even really necessary to have one. I sometimes use a wand. I've never used a cup or a sword or dagger unless I need it for a specific purpose. I do usually use the pentacle or disc uh, because I usually do have some talisman which is the material focus of the working. Uh, but that's about it. And sometimes I don't even have 
the disk. So the way to think about the four main magical tools properly is not to think about it as an inventory of all of the tools that you need before you can do a successful magical working, but rather the kinds of personal qualities that the magician would benefit from taking into the ritual with them, as symbolized by each of those tools. Next, I wanna talk about invocation and evocation. So when you've set up your ritual, as I described in my how to do a basic magic ritual video, in order to better embody your intent and express your intent, uh, it's very helpful to have some kind of a conjuration that you recite or you speak forth as a way of sending your intention out into the universe. There's really two main types of this kind of a conjuration. There's an invocation and an evocation. Now those two terms, invocation and evocation, sometimes get used interchangeably, but they're actually very different. An invocation is where you are calling the spirit or calling some state of mind or psychological state into you so that it changes the way that you perceive reality. An evocation is if you are trying to call something to appear in the room with you in the physical space outside of the circle so that you can send it out into the external world to do something according to your will. And in the case of both an invocation and an evocation, the circle is necessary because in an invocation, even though uh, you're not so much calling something to you outside of the space in the circle, you do nonetheless need to maintain a boundary between your core consciousness and whatever else is going to uh, be invited into your awareness by the invocation. So it really depends what you're trying to do in the working. Are you trying to change your attitude? Are you trying to change something about your subjective awareness, your own psychology, or do you wanna make things happen out there? That will determine whether you use an invocation or an evocation. You can find an invocation or an evocation that is suitable to your working. Perhaps it is for a particular spirit that you're relying on uh, to call on in the working to fulfill your will, or you can write your own. And using some sort of a conjuration is important because if you think about the term casting a spell, it's really uh, etymologically the same as the words that we use for language, like spelling. Um, because with words uh, in magic, we, we recognize the power of words. And what you're doing is you're formulating your intent in the form of that language and then when you're speaking that forth, uh, you, are, you are calling it into existence. That is the power of the word. And that is why the word is such a potent symbol for the creative power of divinity. So we honor and respect the word and we tailor our words in the magical working so that they will allow us to get the result that we want. Another powerful use of the word is through the intoning of God names. Uh, there is, for any sort of type of spirit, whether it's planetary, elemental, zodiacal, what have you, there will be particular names of angels or names of God which correspond to that particular type of spirit and you can use those and intone those to further strengthen the intent of the working and the effect of the working. And that brings me to my next point, which is the art of correspondence. So if you watch this video together with my video on how to construct a basic magic ritual, you'll see a lot of different elements. There's colors, uh, the colors of the, the altar cloth perhaps, or robes, candles, uh, the colors of the particular talisman that you might have in front of you, the, the smell of the incense, the types of God names that you're selecting to form a part of the verbalization of your intent. All of these different things are different elements of the ritual which convey a certain kind of aesthetic. And it's important that with each of these items, they all reflect the same kind of thrust of the working, the same flavor or the same uh, fundamental type of 
energy of the working. And it can be overwhelming trying to figure out which incense matches with which color, matches with which god names, and so on. Which is why one of the most helpful tools that a magician, a ceremonial magician, can have in their arsenal is tables of correspondence. The most common form that such tables of correspondence will take is in the form of a book full of such tables. And the most popular such book is 777. Uh, often called Liber 777, Liber being the Latin for book. Uh, it says that it was written by Alistair Crowley. However, uh, that's not exactly true. Um, much of the material in 777 was actually uh, developed, produced by Alan Bennett, who was an initiate of the Golden Dawn, one of the great uh, occultists and great esotericists of the 19th century. And uh, Crowley appropriated his tables and put his own name on it and presented it as though uh, it was all his idea and all his work. Uh, so I'll just demonstrate how a book of tables of correspondence can work to help you to construct a ritual. Let's say that I want to do a ritual to uh, get a greater sense of uh, self-actualization to, to get a better understanding of my higher self, my divine self, uh, my soul if you will, and so I want to conduct a working with a spirit of the sun. From my study of the Kabbalah I will know how all of the planetary energies and elemental energies fit in on the schematic of the tree of life, so I will easily be able to pinpoint the sun as Sephira number six, or Tifereth on the tree of life. And so in order to construct a working for the sun, I can look up the number six here, uh, here in this column, and I can have a look at some of the attributes in different columns. Uh, some of them will be to do with God names, some of them will to be to do with angelic names, some will be to do with incenses, and each column for each subject matter will show me which is the color or the incense, etc., corresponding to the number six, which is the sphere of Tifereth, which represents the sun. Uh, so I can see here in table 16, the queen scale of color, the color yellow or gold corresponds to the sun. So I want a lot of yellow or gold colored items. I can see uh, the different types of gods which are solar in nature, such as uh, in the selection of Egyptian gods, Ra. Uh, from the selection of Greek gods, there's Apollo. So if I wanted to work with a particular god or, or, or deity uh, which corresponded to the sun, I might consider working with one of those deities. I can see here that the perfume or incense of the sun, of number six, is olibanium. This is a more antiquated way of saying frankincense. And there's other tables where you can find particular god names corresponding to the sun, and you can also find uh, angels corresponding to the sun, and other spirits corresponding to the sun. The tables in Liber 777 have rows numbered zero to 32. Uh, so this represents uh, nothingness followed by the 10 sephiroth followed by the 22 paths. So those broadly speaking are the archetypal energies that you can select from uh, when you're trying to work out what kind of working you would like to do. Uh, there is another book of correspondences which is sometimes used which is called the Complete Magician's Tables. Uh, not as popular as 777, but according to many practitioners, has more up-to-date attributions. So that's another one that you can check out. But using these tables of correspondence, you can easily organize information and you can bring order and continuity into the overall structure of your working. So uh, that brings me to the end of this video. Uh, now you have everything that you need to know to construct a basic magical ritual to conduct 
a magical working for whatever you're trying to achieve. So if you've enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed my other videos on this topic, please subscribe to my channel. It really does help me when you do that. Uh, if you are a practitioner or even if you're new to this topic, please leave your thoughts or your comments down below. Uh, if you have any suggestions for topics on magic or any other kind of esoteric topic, uh, which you'd like me to cover in a future video, let me know about that. Otherwise, thanks again for listening and I'll see you next time.